Tom Thumb. There once lived a woodman and his wife who had no children. How I wish we had children to enjoy our evenings with. Yes, I really wish we had a child who would bring us joy, even if it was a tiny thing as big as my thumb. And lo, the wife's wish was fulfilled. She got a little boy who was only as high as her thumb. How tiny he is! But he is our child, and we shall love him dearly, and we shall name him Thomas. Though the woodman and his wife fed Tom plenty of healthy food, he didn't grow higher than his father's thumb, and everyone called him Tom Thumb. But he was one smart little fellow who was always happy and loved his parents. I have to go to the woods to chop wood, and I am late. If I wait to get the cart ready, I will be even more late. But then, how will I get the wood back without the cart? Don't you worry, Dad. I will bring the cart. <laughs> And how will you do that, son? You can't even reach the bridle of the horse. Oh, that's not a worry. Mama will harness the horse, and I will get into a sear and tell it where to go. I don't think. Aw, come on, Dad. At least give me a chance to prove myself. I know I can do it. Well, if you're sure. Sure, I'm sure. The cart will reach you when you want it. Trust me. And so Tom set out to take the cart to his father. He sat right near the horse's ear and guided it to the woods. On the way, two men passed near the cart. I say, I hear a voice from somewhere near that cart, but I can't see anyone. Am I imagining things? No, no, you're right. Even I can hear a voice. I can't see anyone. Let's follow that cart. And so the two men kept following the cart until it reached the woodman. Hey, Dad, I'm here. See, I told you I could do it. Now take me down. The two men could not believe their eyes when they saw the woodman gently pick up a tiny boy from the horse's ear. Holy cow! Is that guy for real? If we can get a hold of him, we will make a fortune by just showing him around. Let's go and ask the woodman how much he will sell him for. Hey, old man, how much would you take for this little chap? How dare you! This is my son, and I wouldn't part with him for anything. Get lost from here! Now Tom was a very smart fellow and quietly whispered into his father's ear. Dad, just take a good amount from them. Don't worry, I will come back to you in no time. Uh, okay. If you really want him, I will give him to you. But you must pay me a good sum. After deciding the price, the two men paid the woodman and took Tom away with them. Where do you want to sit, little fellow? Oh. Just put me in the brim of your hat. I'll have a fine view from there. So Tom perched himself on the hat, and off they went. After some time, they decided to rest a while at a field, and this was the opportunity Tom was waiting for. As soon as he was put on the ground, he ran fast on his tiny legs along the plowed field till he saw a hole. And quickly scampered down. Hey, hey, you! Get back up there if you know what's good for you. Ha ha ha! First, see if you can catch me. The two men tried poking and prodding with the stick to get Tom out, but all in vain. Finally, they went away in a huff. Tom looked around and, seeing a snail shell close by, crept into it and fell fast asleep. When he woke up after a while, he heard the voices of two robbers who were making plans to rob the house of the parson. Hey, 
I can help you with that. Who's there? Hey, look down here, mister. Uh, oh, it is a little fellow of two inches. Or is it three inches? Forget how many inches I am and listen to me. I can easily sneak into that parson's house and throw out whatever you want. The two robbers whispered between themselves. Okay, if we agree, what would you want? I will tell you that later. Let's go now. On reaching the parson's house, Tom went through the window bars and started yelling. Should I throw out the money now? What else do you want me to throw out? You silly fellow. Stop shouting. Stop shouting. Should I throw out the money now? But it was too late. The parson's cook woke up and rushed to see what was happening. And on seeing her, the robbers ran away. Ha ha ha! Taught those robbers a lesson they never forget. <sighs> I'm really tired now. Ah, uh, that hay looks to be comfortable enough to sleep on. Tom was soon fast asleep. <coughs> Alas, the next morning, the cook came out early and threw the hay for the cow to eat. When Tom woke up, it was very, very dark. Why is it so dark? It surely can't be night still. And where am I? I remember I fell asleep on the hay. Just then, Tom heard the cook. Here, Daisy dear, have some more hay and then give me some lovely creamy milk. Oh my god, the cow has eaten the hay I was lying on. Hey, hey. Don't give any more hay. There is no more place for me here. It is getting all stuffy, and I'm getting squeezed tight. The cook started yelling, Oh my good lord, the cow is talking. Master, master, come fast. The cow is bewitched. Have you gone mad, woman? Stop talking nonsense. The cow talking, indeed. But then the parson also heard Tom's voice. Stop the hay. I'm getting suffocated in here. Quick, get the axe and kill the cow. The cow was killed and its stomach split open and thrown away. Whew. Finally, I'm out. Feeling bad. The poor cow had to get killed. Ah, oh, well. Nice to see the sun shining brightly. But Tom's adventure was not over yet. As he was walking along, a wicked wolf saw him and quickly pounced on him and gulped him down. That was a tasty morsel. But I am still hungry. So now I'm in the stomach of a wolf? Tasty morsel, eh? I will show him. Yoo-hoo! Mr. Wolf, you want some really, really good food? Mr. Wolf, you want some really, really good food? Huh? Who is this? It is a tasty morsel, Mr. Wolf. If you want more, I can lead you to a place where you can eat a whole lot of goodies. You know, apple tarts, cold chicken, yummy slices of ham. Where? Where? Tell me where! Tom, the smart lad that he was, gave directions to the wolf that led to his own house. When they reached there, he told the wolf how to make its way to the kitchen through the drain outside the house. The wolf squeezed and squeezed and squeezed itself till it finally reached the kitchen. Oh, 
That was a real tight squeeze. Thought I would get stuck in there forever. When the wolf looked around, he saw all the tasty food that Tom had told him about. Ah, look at these goodies. Worth the trouble getting here. The wolf sat down and started quickly gobbling down all the food. That was a wonderful meal. But I seem to have eaten too much. I'm not able to move now. Now you've had him, Mr. Bad, Bad Wolf. Suddenly, Tom started kicking and shouting in the wolf's stomach. Ouch! Ouch! Hey, you stop it, will you? But Tom continued with the kicking and shouting. He made so much noise that his father and mother came running to the kitchen to see what the matter was. Good heavens, how did this wolf get into the kitchen? The woodman dashes to the shed to get an axe to kill the wolf, when suddenly he hears a voice. Dad, Dad, be careful when you kill this fellow. I am in his stomach. What? Don't worry, Tom, I'll get you out. This glutton has eaten so much, he won't be able to run. So saying, the woodman hit the wolf hard on the head. When the wolf fell over, he quickly cut open his stomach and took out Tom. My child, where did you go? I missed you so much. Never again will I let you out of my sight. Hello, Mom. Hello, Dad. Nice to see you both again. Right now, I just want to have a bath, change out of these filthy clothes, and then have a good meal. But where have you been, my child? That is a very, very long story. And right now, I just want to eat and then have a nice long sleep. The story will have to wait for another time. Rumpelstiltskin In a faraway land, there was a beautiful wood by which ran a stream, and close to the stream was a mill. The owner of the mill lived nearby with his beautiful and clever daughter. Oh, daughter, I am so tired of leading a poor man's life. I wish we could also be rich and have every comfort in the world. Just then, the king of the country came passing by on a hunting trip. The king has come to our woods. I can't believe it. I have to try and meet him. Yes, this is a fine opportunity for me to impress the king. The miller made his way to where the king was. Bowing before the king, the miller said, Your Majesty, I am indeed honored to meet you. Won't you please come this way? I would like you to meet my beautiful and talented daughter. Really? What special talent does your daughter have that I would want to meet her? Er, oh yes, Your Majesty, my daughter can spin gold from straw. Now the king was a very wealthy man, but he was also greedy, and the thought of making gold from straw obviously tempted him. Really? This I have to see. Bring your daughter to the palace this evening. The miller went home to tell his daughter that the king wanted them to present themselves to the palace that evening, and both of them soon left for the palace. Arriving at the palace, the miller and his daughter were quickly ushered in to meet the king. The king was pleased to meet the miller and his daughter and said, Hmm, your daughter is indeed beautiful, and now we will see how she spins straw into gold. So saying, the king led the daughter to a room in the palace where there was a spinning wheel and a large pile of straw. Now set to work and show us your talent. All this straw must be spun into gold by morning if you love your life. The daughter tried to plead with the king that it was just an empty boast that her father had made, but all in vain, as the king did not listen and locked the room and went away. Oh, woe my fate. What has my father done? How am I going to do this impossible task? Just then, a funny-looking old man hobbled into the room. Now, pretty lass, why do you weep so? Oh, sir, I must spin all this straw into gold by morning, or the king will kill me. I just don't know what to do. Hmm, if I spin this straw into gold, what will you give me? K-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1
Can you really help me, sir? Oh, I will be so grateful. Let me see. Here, I will give you my necklace. Okay, lassie. Now stop crying and go sit down and let me work. The funny old man sat himself at the spinning wheel. Whirr, whirr, spinning wheel. Do as you are told. All the straw in this room spin into fine gold. What an amazing sight it was. As the miller's daughter watched in surprise, the pile of straw was soon turned into gold. The old man got up and turned to leave. Oh, I don't know how to thank you, sir. I don't know what I would have done without your help. Here is my necklace. At daybreak, the king came into the room, and lo and behold, the sight that met his eyes made them glitter and shine. I can't believe what I'm seeing. Now I know you are truly talented. However, the king's greed became even more, and he planned to have the miller's daughter spend even more gold the next day. Tonight, my dear, you will again spin all the straw in the room to gold before sunrise. I am sure you can do it once more. The miller's daughter again sat down in dismay, not knowing what to do, when the same old funny man appeared again. Aha! So you have to spin more gold tonight, I see. Oh, sir, please help me again. And what will I get in return? Sir, I only have this ring left. I will gladly give it to you if you help me. All right. I shall help you again in return for the ring. And so the old man sat down again at the spinning wheel. Whirr, whirr, spinning wheel, do as you are told. All the straw in this room spin into fine gold. Once again, all the straw turned into gold, and the old man picked up the ring and left. The next morning, when the king entered the room and saw the gold, he thought to himself, She may be just a miller's daughter, but she is beautiful and can give me all the gold that I desire. The king walked up to the miller's daughter, held her hands, and told her, My dear, I am very impressed with your beauty and talent. Tonight you will be given even more straw to spin. And if you can turn it into gold again, you shall be my queen. So once again, that night, the miller's daughter was locked in a room filled with straw. Soon the old man came visiting again. Another room full of straw to spin. So what are you going to give me today to spin this into gold? Oh, sir. I have nothing more to give you, but the king has said that if I spin all this straw into gold tonight, he will make me his queen. Then I can give you all that you desire. The old man kept thinking for some time, and finally told the miller's daughter, I have no desire for any wealth, but you must promise me that you will give me your firstborn child. The miller's daughter looked at the old man in amazement. But she was so desperate and didn't know what else to do. So she made the promise to the old man. He again sat at the spinning wheel. Whirr, whirr, spinning wheel, do as you are told. All the straw in this room spin into fine gold. Next morning, the king entered the room, and his eyes shone when he saw all the gold. My dear, as I said, I will now marry you and make you my queen. 
Let there be rejoicing in the kingdom to welcome the new queen. The king and queen lived happily for many years and were blessed with a baby boy. However, by now, the queen had forgotten her promise to the funny old man who had helped her until he came to visit her one day when she was playing with her precious child. I hope you remember me and the promise you made to me, O oh queen. The queen was shocked and dismayed on seeing the old man and could not even think of parting with her bundle of joy and cried and begged before the old man. Oh, sir, please do not be so cruel. Do not take away my baby from me. I will give you anything you want. Gold, precious stones, land. I have no use for these things. I beg you, sir, please take pity on me. My baby is so small. The queen's tears finally moved the old man, and he said to her, Oh, well, well, I give you three days, and if in these three days you guess my name, you can keep your baby. The fear of losing her child kept the queen awake all night, and she wrote down all the strange names that she had ever heard of. The next day, the old man came and asked her his name. Is your name Benjamin? Timothy? Jeremy? The queen said all the names that she could think of, but the old man said that was not his name. You have tried, but what my name is, a guess you could not make. You have two days more, then your baby I will take. So saying, the old man went away. I have to somehow guess what the old man's name is. I cannot even think of giving my baby away. Oh, what shall I do? The next day, the queen dispatched messengers across the kingdom to find out all the possible strange names. However, when the old man came, though she repeated all the names the messengers had given her, she could not guess the old man's name. She was now extremely worried and desperate. She once again sent the messengers and told them to visit the most remote corners of the kingdom to find any strange names they could. The messengers came back with no new names, but one messenger told the queen that he wished to have a word with her. Your Majesty, I could not find any new names, but I saw a strange sight today. As I was climbing down a hill, I entered a forest, and amongst the tall trees was a small cottage. There was a fire burning outside and a strange figure dancing around it and singing. Today I brew, tomorrow I bake, and after that, the child I'll take. Never can the queen guess that Rumpelstiltskin is my name. The queen was overjoyed and rewarded the messenger with gold and precious jewels. Ah, oh, now I'll see how he will take my baby, the funny old man. The next day, all the courtiers gathered around the queen where she sat on her throne, and the nurse stood beside her with the baby in her arms when the old man arrived. Oh, sir, I have been thinking and thinking of what your name could be. Is it Tom? Is it Jemmy? The queen kept on saying names, and each time the old man kept shaking his head, his smile growing wider and wider. I can't think of any more names. Wait a minute. Could your name be Rumpelstiltskin? The old man was outraged on hearing this. You could not have guessed my name. Some witch has told you. Some witch has told you. So angry was he that he stamped his right foot with so much force that it sank into the floor. He forcefully pulled it out with both hands and made his way out amidst the jeering of all the courtiers. The queen was finally relieved and lived happily ever after with the king and her baby.